Sorry, world. I'm fed up with this, this world. world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes I think that myself. I'm fed up with this world. That's how I think it now. If I'm, like, upset at <laughs> something I see on the news or the weather or whatever. I'm fed up with this world and I'm like, stop it. You're making light of this situation, brain. Damn you, Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> I've been sitting a long time. I've been sitting on this chair all my life. How about we do some unboxing? Unboxing? Yeah, we can do that. We're going to open our mailbag and we're going to thank our donors. People will go to welcometothebasementshow.com and donate to support this show. They also send us packages in the mail to support this show. It's a good time. Unboxing. Yeah! Our donors are as such. Melanie, Brian, Abigail, Michael, Kelsey, Alexander, Emily, Roger, Shelby, Patrick, Lindsay, James, Anthony, Abraham, David, Luke, Martha, Thomas, and Eric. Thank you. I want to open stuff. Oh, sure. Let's. This is from Vincent in San Marcos. We haven't heard from him in a while. This is from the Hogans of Austin, Texas. Formerly Valerie's family. Now it's just the Hogans. I get it. We got a handful of postcards here. Uh These are vintage looking postcards. Yeah. A house. A town. Oh. Butts. Butts. Mountain. Fancy palace. Britannia. Oh, I know you'll like this. Breast. <laughs> I can't touch the breast. I'm married. And Normandy. Vincent. Over here, the Hogan sent us this thing. Some tissue. A little sparkly heart. Sparkle heart. Is what I named my horse. What? Basically, we can start our own Welcome to the Basement Scout Troop. They sent us patches. Oh, wow. Of ourselves watching a movie. Oh, man, how do, and, how do you even make something like this? And then they sent us merit badges. <laughs> this guy showing a little, that's an old-fashioned film camera. We have a popcorn thing, if this is when we get into the concessions portion of our show. We have a microphone, that one goes to Tona. And we got a clapperboard. That's cool! Dear Matt and Craig, we trust these small tokens of our esteem will find you well. We love Welcome to the Basement and Beer and Board Games. You guys are awesome. Your avid watchers, Chris and Jess. You were mentioning the concessions portion of the show. I think we can do that right now. I got a big old bag of chips from our last unboxing. I think we should crack them open and have some. Well, yeah, we should. These are from Alec in Hallam, Pennsylvania. Those are tasty chips. Mmm. There's something unique about them. I can't place it. Oh. Oh. Well, we've just got one postcard this week. It was sent to us by Nick in Tucson. Oh. He says, what did you guys think of the new version of It? I really enjoyed it. Did you see it? No, not yet. I haven't been able to go to as many movies this year because I have a baby. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the original one. I haven't read the book, so... I read the book a long time ago. But Nick says he really enjoyed it and found it painfully relatable. Aside from the killer clown, my childhood and friends were very much like the Losers Club in the movie. Well, that was from Nick. There you go. I have a knife in my hand. (laughs) The package you're opening up is also from Nick. You're welcome to the basement. Here's some cool stuff I think you might enjoy. Earl Grey tea. One for you and one for me. You can keep both of those. I'm not much of a tea drinker. All right. One for me and one for me. Stickers! One of these adjustable art blocks. This is various things uh, from Arizona. Oh boy, I'm keeping this one. (laughs) We've got a faster pussycat kill kill sticker. Oh, all kinds of stickers in here. Wax tracks. Ooh, I'm keeping that one too. Magnets from my uncle's thrift store. Thrift store. I have all the stuff to put in my fridge. I never run out of room. The thing. Uh And then a whole bunch of compact discs. Murder by Guitar, the complete studio recordings, 1976 to 1980. Ooh, that's crime! Oh, man. Hot wire my heart. Wallpaper Prison, just a little EP by those guys. American Artifact, the rise of American rock poster art. This might be a DVD. Looks like it. The Afghan Wigs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a classic. Gentleman at 21. And now, viewer questions. I have one from Michael Barnfather. Are there any movies you used to love but can't stand to watch now? Now, there's two ways to take this. One that I used to love and now I think isn't that good, which just gets people mad at me when I say that I don't like The Goonies anymore. My first thought with this was actually a movie that I love so much I can't watch it anymore, that it kind of hurts to watch because it reminds me of my lost innocence and youth. 
And it's strange to think that it's this movie that reminds me of that, and that would be Philip Kaufman's Unbearable Lightness of Being. Mm. For some reason, it gives me this great existential sadness that I will never be 18 again. Tony Cheek asks, have you guys ever thought about having guests on the show? We've had guests on the show. Sasha Baron Cohen? That's right. He showed up in the laundry room that one day. <laughs> That's right. Our buddy Rob Matsushita has been on the show. He chose Bedazzled for us to watch. Aaron Yacht has been on the show twice. Mm-hmm. Once to pick a movie and once to show up unexpectedly and give me a loaf of bread. But they don't sit with us on the couch. They don't discuss the movies with us and, afterwards. And that's what Tony's talking about. And I have considered it. I haven't considered having a third person on the couch. But at this point, I don't really feel like we need it. No. And it's just going to kind of uh, complicate things. This is from Andrew in Prospect, New York. I'm going to get out my samurai katana and open this from Matthew in Houston, Texas. Possibly a self-portrait saying, I hope you enjoy the postcards as much as I enjoy the show. And there you go. There's a little (laughs) pumpkin down to signify that it's Halloween. Okay. We have Nathaniel Hawthorne, who I do base my luck on. (laughs) <laughs> Antique room, Hawaii, lots of stuff from Hawaii and lots of old, old rooms. We've got an envelope here that says classic movie posters, and there's a note inside. Hey guys, thanks for all the hours of entertainment you've provided. I was hoping to get this to you by an October unboxing, but I believe procrastination may have gotten a buzz. Movies. I found these 20-year-old items while doing a little spring cleaning and knew where I could finally give for them a good home. Look forward to enjoying many more years of basement fun. These look familiar. These are all postcards. Of all of the monster stamps. Oh, very nice. Of the little pins yeah. that I gave you. That's why I wanted to do it by October. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Cut. Uh, the lights have arrived. We're going to have to shoot the scene again. Sometimes I get this terrible feeling that something awful is going to happen. Like something will sock it to me. <laughs> Jill is a model, and she's told by this guy that there's a job in Egypt for her. Why Egypt? Because our client, Ardoth Bay, wants you to go there. <laughs> what sort of uh, references do you have? I do Barbara Rush. You do what? Her hair. I do Barbara Rush. I also uh, do Barbara Rush. Yeah. I also do everyone that I <laughs> do hair for. Don't take it out on the outfit, man. You were rocking that thing. He's rocking this one, too. That's just kind of Warren Beatty. Whatever he's wearing, he's going to rock. My secretary said she saw you talking to that boy, that actor. Steve Slutes couldn't get arrested as an actor. Unless he commits murder. (laughs) I don't fuck anybody for money. I do it for fun. And to fill this mother-shaped hole uh, in my soul. I think George is a fairy. He could be a brownie or a sprite, but not a fairy. Are you gay? You want a baked apple? They're cold, but they're good. No, thanks. No thanks you're gay, or no thanks baked apple? This song. Ba-da-ba-ba! The sexiest song in the world. (laughs) Well, what you gonna do? I'd cut it. Cut it? It makes you look like a hooker. Now you no longer look like a hooker. You look like an escort. Oh, you're a genius, honey. You're a genius. <laughs> a hair genius. It's not as impressive as an, a regular brain genius. A little high strung, you know? See, this doesn't drink too much. Thanks, typical man. <laughs> be straight with me for once in your life. All right, Felicia, I'll be straight with you. hi ya yo hi ya yo this party is really happening. I hope Peter Sellers shows up. <laughs> Birdie num num. All the puppies are in the car. <sighs> That's my code phrase for I'm pregnant. <laughs> That's right. Me, Lester, <laughs> have been impregnated. Nothing but a whore. Oh, no. You could call everybody a whore. You can call me a whore. I, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Come on. Go on. Call me a... Call, call me it. Call me that. Call me that. Oftentimes when I open up my P.O. box, I see records in there. In fact, I see one in that stack that we're going to get to in just a minute. But now, some records that I've gotten in the past that I've listened to. First of all, we have the Rural Alberta Advantage. Just from hearing that name and looking at this cover, I thought these guys would fall firmly into the Fleet Foxes' Boney Bear camp. They don't. I'm hearing a lot of Modest Mouse in this. 
Smashing Pumpkins. There's a song at the end of Side A on this that sounds exactly like a Neutral Milk Hotel song. So these guys are really wearing their influences on their sleeve, but this will satisfy that indie rock sweet tooth that you have. And next up, we got a 45 from a girl group called The Dead Deads. And this sounds exactly like this cover looks. You know, these guys have got their branding down pat. Uh, it's just good, fun, kind of punk rock. Doesn't say which side is side A or side B, so you don't know Whoa. which song is on which side. But I'm guessing the song that mentions Colorado is the one titled Weed. <laughs> so there we go. The recent season of Curb Your Enthusiasm is in full swing, and so I have another Curb Your Enthusiasm spec script to share with you. It's not too late, Larry. Leon Black shows up at Larry's door, very excited. It turns out that Larry is mentioned in one of the tracks of the Hot New Rap album by the Hot New Rap star. Leon plays it for him. The rapper rhymes favorite with Larry David. Larry's vanity leads him to believe he loves the track, and by extension, he must be a rap music fan. Larry drives around town blasting the music with the windows open. Every time he passes a black person, he waves excitedly and points at himself. Larry clumsily adopts certain hip-hop practices, such as high-fiving, fist-bumping, and poorly using slang. Larry and Leon are driving along, listening to their favorite album. Leon is complaining that Larry only plays the same track over and over again. Maybe, uh, I could be a rapper, muses Larry. Spit some motherfucking rhymes, Larry David! Larry does some very poor rapping and ends up dropping the N-word. Leon is very upset. What? I, I thought I was allowed to do that. Leon insists that Larry pull over and let him out, but then changes his mind when he realizes how far they are from the house. <laughs> when Larry tells Jeff about his new rap stardom, Jeff mentions that the rapper is playing a show in L.A., and Jeff can get Larry tickets and backstage passes. Larry takes Leon to the show, and he acts like a big shot in front of all the black people. Backstage, Larry meets the rapper, and they hit it off. I'm a pretty big hip-hop fan. Pretty, pretty, pretty big. But it quickly becomes apparent that Larry knows nothing about the genre. The rapper gives Larry some mixed CDs of some of his favorite rap songs. Larry says, Uh, do any of these mention me? Quickly becomes apparent that Larry is just interested in hearing his own name and not in rap music. The next day, as he's driving in his car, Larry is scanning through the radio stations. He skips past every song. Music just isn't as interesting to him anymore when it doesn't say his name. There could be another song that comes out at the end of it that also drops his name but not in a favorable light it's a diss track diss track <laughs> and he still loves it yeah ah. <laughs> we have two more packages let's open them up all right this is a little broadway poster that our buddy aaron from hill's kitchen has come up with and it's for marty the musical starring dom DeLuise and eleanor braun oh m sloan raves a dumpy schlub with a golden voice <laughs> craig johnson writes I loved it more than Barbarella. And T.A. Epley says, <laughs> get your tickets faster. Faster. There we go. Oh, I've got another comedy record. He says he somehow forgot to put this with the last batch of comedy LPs. He probably included Wayne Shorter on accident instead. <laughs> Smothers Brothers. <laughs> Smothers would be next to Shorter. He continues to say that when his mother saw him boxing this up, she said... I saw Professor Irwin Corey at that club in the early 50s. That's oh, pretty cool. Star of Car Wash. Well, this time Aaron has given you a gift. Oh, it's a book. I have not read this one. On past episodes, you have talked about your love of architecture. I hope you enjoy this fictional take on the early life of Frank Lloyd Wright. You haven't read this? Loving Frank. This is from Dustin and Olympia, Washington. DVDs. Here, you take that sack. <laughs> Big box of DVDs. Some more DVDs and some CDs. Wow, a lot wow. of stuff here. Something Wild. I like that movie. Hanzo the Razor, starring Shintaro Katsu. Excellent. Heart Beeps. This is a terrible movie. Haha, <laughs> Rudy Ray Moore, Disco Godfather. <laughs> Look at that. Hell Comes to Frog Town. I believe that's Roddy Roddy Piper. <laughs> Tears of the Black Tiger. This looks like it's um, cowboy kung fu there. We have Battles Without Honor and Humanity, which looks like it's a little bit more serious coming from the Pacific Rim. 2046, which is a bit of... Uh, that's Ang Wong Kar Wai. Oh, nice. Funky Forest. 
Jay Church. She's a cute little lady there. Oh, yeah. Fastbacks, one of the best Seattle bands of the 1990s. And a man or Astro Man. Oh, I know them. Yeah, they seem to come to Madison every four days. <laughs> <laughs> the Wizard of Speed and Time. There it is. There was no note, so thank you, Dustin. Thank you. We had a great time opening up all the packages here on the show and doing all the things that we do, and we hope that you enjoyed it, too. You can see the new episode of Welcome to the Basement this coming Friday, and now this. Listen, baby, I'm a star. I'm a star. I'm not going to stop till I reach the top. Baby, I'm a star. Oh, what? You okay, man? I'm okay now.